everybody. Welcome back to Grain Free Homestead. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to do a quick little video on how to part out your chickens. So a couple weeks ago we processed all of our chickens but two because we had a little one that was like a baby and it just didn't grow. So we let we took out the two smallest ones and had them we let them grow an extra two and a half three weeks. So yesterday we butchered them um, did all that we've been letting them rest overnight so today I'm going to part them out I know a lot of people use the whole chicken and shrink wrap bag, shrink wrap bags but we left about eight of our chickens like that but we don't normally eat that way we uh, you know if I'm gonna make chicken tacos or sometimes we'll have thighs and legs or sometimes we'll just have wings and that's just how we cook and we really didn't want to stray from that because that's what we're used to that's how we plan our meals out so i went the first day we butchered chickens we let them rest overnight and then i spent almost probably five hours the next day parting the chickens out so we had a couple comments on there a couple people looking for well how did you part them out what did you do so we're just gonna we had these two chickens left i thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to show you guys how we part them out it's not hard and especially once you get the rhythm of it down and you get used to it after that first or second chicken um, it's, it's you know like anything else you get fast and you get good at it but I wanted to show you how we do it because a lot of people don't want the whole chicken and it's and we like whole chickens we like rotisserie chickens or we like to smoke a chicken but that's just not how we eat on a daily basis and this is how we're gonna do it at home in a kitchen we don't have a special setup so I'm going to show you all the things that, that we use and that I have out and ready uh, when we are parting these chickens up. So I'm going to turn around and show you what simple things that you need. Okay, so you need a good cutting board. We got a good fillet knife here. I actually just sharpened it up. I like the short ones because uh, maybe it's because my hands are small. Uh, but the, the bigger ones, it seems like there's more room for air. So I like a smaller fillet knife for myself. I have freezer bags here. It's just two chickens, so I only have these bags right now. I have the other ones over here on the side. But I have a small one, quart size, gallon size for uh, the thighs, drumsticks, and the breasts. I have a Sharpie to mark them. And I always have, I'll probably get another one out. I'll probably need two of these plastic grocery bags because they're just great for putting all the parts in. Now, when we did our big lot of chickens, I had big, huge stainless steel bowls because I was keeping the necks and the backs for stock and there was a whole lot of carcasses. But today, it's just two. So this is just a basic setup of, of everything that you need. It doesn't take much, does it? So I'm going to turn around and we're going to get to cracking on these chickens. Okay, so here's our bird. Like I said, we had two yesterday. It's already been cleaned out on the inside. Uh, we've already taken the neck off. Um, so it's just it's ready to go so this is at the this is the at the point in the process where it would be if you were gonna shrink crack the shrink why can't I say that shrink wrap the bird so that's what we're uh, getting ready to do we're at the point now where I'm gonna process everything out so I'm gonna try and walk you through it and talk you through it I can't get the camera where I can get my face and get you close enough to the bird to actually see what I'm doing so I'm just gonna be talking and explaining what I'm doing while I'm cutting it up okay I am a lefty, so I'm sorry if the angle confuses you guys, okay? I actually think I'm going to tilt this a little bit if I need to so that you guys can see better. So what I start with, I usually start with the right-hand side for some reason. I'm going to try and start with the left hand, my left, of the, the leg and the thigh portion. So let me turn it around so you can see the cavity is open. Okay, and you can kind of see this skin here is open where I cut it yesterday. Um, it may not always be that big of a hole. It just was yesterday. Um, so I'm going to start right here in this opening. I'm going to see if I can do it facing the camera. So there's this skin here. So I'm going to start there. And what I found, I watched as many videos as I could. And the best way to learn how to do this was to just get in here and let the and the bird kind of if you pick the bird up while you're cutting 
it kind of guides you as to where the knife should be going. I'm not sure if that makes sense what I'm saying, but I'm gonna walk, I'm, we're gonna go through this so maybe you'll, you'll get an idea, okay? So once you cut that skin, see how it kind of opens up? You just kind of cut all the way down. And this is what I do. Take my hand and I physically pick up the bird. So here's the drum, here's the thigh, okay? Let's see if you can see the angle. See where I've just cut that skin? This is all separate in here. Now, a lot of people take it and push out the joint. You'll hear like a little pop, okay? I just simply take the knife and, you, and there's like these lines that are already in there for you. So you don't have to like know what everything. You just, it's like the bird is already It's already kind of laid out for you to process it. So I'm just gonna take it, and when you feel the weight of the bird, it, it like helps your knife find the gaps between the joints, okay? So I'm not putting any pressure on that. I'm gonna flip it over, and I've cut down in here, okay? You kind of see that, and see, hear that pop? That's what you wanna hear. And on the back side of the pop, that's where it popped. I'm going to take my knife right under here and run it along here. So I like to pick up the bird because then I can feel what I am doing. I had a feather. Be careful and watch your fingers. So that, that joint separated for me. It's been a couple weeks, so I'm a little bit rusty, honestly. And then I just cut down. And what you have left looks just like what you get in the you know grocery store when you have the two pieces together. So what I'm gonna do is set these to the side and once I get both pieces off, then we'll separate the thigh from the drum. So we're gonna move to the other side. Let's see if I can do it this way. So cut that skin and there's some membranes in there. Okay, same thing. We're gonna pop this open just a tiny bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then you follow your knife. See, I'm kinda, it's sitting on here, but I'm, I'm letting the weight of the chicken kinda guide me. So you have the thigh and the drum connected there. Okay, when you flip it on the underside, you kind of can see this like a fat line right here, and that is the line of your drum. And I'll kind of move it, and it helps me. You can move the, the skin there. It helps me to see where the leg is, and you are going to follow that. And this joint right here, it's the big joint, you know, when you're eating a leg, there's the joint. You're gonna cut between the two joints. You're gonna get your knife between the two, like in the cart cartilage right here. And that is the toughest part of this whole process. So I flip it over so that I can see it and I make my cut. And then once I make my cut, you can kind of see the joint in there, and when I and when I move it, I can see um, where I'm supposed to cut, and that you can feel it. Seeing isn't always, and then you'll, you'll the knife will, will guide you through that joint. So I was surprised that you actually cut into the drumstick more than I thought that you would. So there's the bone. And we like the skin, so I try to salvage the skin, but we like the skin on the our dark meat. And then there's your thigh. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Okay, 
So I flipped it over again. I see my line here for the drum. So I'm gonna make a cut here. And it should never be super hard. It, sh it, sh it, it should kind of glide through that. You shouldn't feel like you're chopping a bone or anything like that. It shouldn't be like that. You can kind of see on the other side of the bone, here's the drum right here. My knife is actually sliding through there. I'm not cutting bone, it's cartilage and I can feel it go through there, and when you feel it, you're good to go. There's the thigh. I already have a bag here, thighs and legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in there. Okay, next we're moving on to the wing. So I'm gonna turn it around so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so open cavity, this is extra down here. Same with this. I'm gonna let the bird guide me. I'm gonna pull the wing out a little bit and see all the skin here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the skin so that I can get in there to cut. And if you look, there's natural lines to help guide you. And so when I use the weight of the chicken and I pick up the wing, it, it honestly, some people op like pop that out, and I find that hard for me to do. I've seen men do it all the time, and I'm like, more power to you. But for me, I just pick the chicken up. I can feel the cartilage separate, just like with the thigh. Now on the wing, be careful not to get too crazy down in here, because that's breast meat, okay? <clears throat> Another feather. I'm gonna get that out while I'm doing this. And so I'm using the weight of the bird again. I did get a little bit of breast meat on that. See that? That's breast meat. But that's what I have this little bag over here for is white meat and things I'm gonna cut off of here. We save that for taco meat and stir fry. So here's the wing, it's still together. We'll separate those in a second. I'm gonna move to the other side. So this is kind of attached right here. It's just skin, fat. So I'm gonna let the weight of the bird guide me. So the knife will go through the joint. It shouldn't be too bad, too big of a struggle. This time I'm going to cut up, a sharper up, so I'm not cutting into that breast like I did that other one. Now when I did, how many was it that I did? 20, 27 the other day I think it was, or 28. You get really good at this really, really fast. So I didn't get any of that breast meat this time, and so there's the wing. So now what I'm left with is basically the breast on here. We're gonna separate out the flapper part and the little drum, the little little bitty drumette wing here. You could definitely keep them together, but we prefer to have them apart. So what I'm looking for here is see how the skin is stretched across here. When you do that, you see here's the line to each of them. It's great. It's like there's a blueprint for you. So I cut right in the middle, and I'm going right down the middle. And see how that opened up? I don't pop it or anything. I just follow the joint. I don't 
that some people do pop them open and I just don't find that it helped me and so see it actually opens up all the way so moving the joint helps me and then I just cut right through it I'm actually going to take the skin off the breast we save the skin Totally your preference. Um, I am grain free due to allergies. So I'm just cutting along that breast line, just skin deep, so that I can peel this skin off. And I kind of use the knife to cut that membrane and I peel it all the way down. It doesn't come off right away. So I'm not cutting the breast, I'm just cutting that thin stuff there. Okay. So you're just left with this. Okay, so I'm gonna cut along this breast line again. Oh, but what I was saying is, is I am grain free. So, and a lot of the times I am keto to help just control different aspects of my thyroid and things that come along with that. So we take the skin and make, it's almost like a pork rind out of them. So I just freeze these and we'll cut these up later and either do it, um, we'll do them in the oven and it makes it a little crispy, almost like chips. So that's what I save the skin for. So I'm gonna cut this skin all the way off now. It doesn't pull off. Okay, so you're wondering what in the world is she doing with that skin? So I'm going to have a pile of skin here. Okay, you're going to feel this bone right down through here. And this is the most intimidating part because this is your breast meat. And we're, you know, you don't want to waste it. So you're going to cut on one side of that bone and just do little bitty cuts and just keep running your finger. Be careful not to get yourself. And do little bitty cuts and it'll come away from the bone. Okay. And I kind of run my thumb down through there. And I am not a professional. This is how I did it. So I run along the bone. You see it separating there. So you kind of open it up like a pocket and you just kind of start cutting until it releases for you. And it'll open all the way up in there to where you kind of can't keep cutting anymore. And then once you get all the way, just cut it off. You can keep slicing if you want. This is the whole breast, tenderloin, tender, kind of separates itself out right there. I'm gonna do the other side. This is the hardest one, because there's nothing left to balance on. You're, you're gonna go on the other side of the bone that you just cut. And start with little cuts to get on that side. So I kind of get my thumb in there Kind of just folds away. You don't want to waste any of that good meat. So just take your time. Cut it all the way off. Kind of pick it up and use the weight of the bird. So 
next I'm going to separate the tenderloin from the breast. We eat it all the same, but it's already there for us, you know, kind of separate. So we're going to go ahead and cut it off. Always cut that little tendon looking thing off because it's just going to aggravate me later. So now I'm going to cut the breast up. We don't eat a whole breast, we eat like tenders because we have little ones that won't eat a whole breast. And I, I am kind of weird about chicken meat. I don't like big thick pieces of chicken meat. So I kind of cut it up into tenders and bag it up that way. It's very tender, it's very easy to cut. Perfect, so the two breasts are one meal for us. I'm gonna get those bagged up and I'll be right back. I already have a bag ready for chicken breast. The last thing that I do is I go back over it and look for chunks of meat, which there is like down in this bone here where the breast was. There's like a hole there. I pull that out, see that little flap of meat? I pull that out. That goes with my meat I'm gonna chunk up. Same goes for this side. I examine the whole thing, go over it. If there's any meat that I can salvage, I do because that's just, uh, to me it's respecting the bird and it's feeding our family. So I've gotten most of the meat off that I can. If you did want to save the back part right here for stock, this is probably the most gruesome part of the whole process. But if what you do is you separate, there's some kind of tendons and find it here, right here. Remember, I'm doing it backwards so you guys can see. Let me flip it around where I normally do it. And this is where you have to use your hands and you take it And you do bring it back when you do that your knife will come through that you're not cutting through bone and you can save this the back for stock now we have several bags full already for when we do stock so um, I'm not gonna save them today because we have so much that I have more than more than enough you could also save you know the rest of the carcass um, for that as well. And we saved several, but we just ran out of freezer room, honestly. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my piles here. I'm gonna do the next chicken and I'm gonna time the next chicken. I'm not gonna be talking so that you guys know how long it takes to do the second chicken.
So it took me exactly nine minutes to process the bird out and that is with me going back over it at the end and cutting off the little chunks of meat and you know getting all the little stuff out uh, certainly you don't have to do that I just prefer to do that so that takes about two minutes just to go through it check everything get all the little pieces out So everything's all done, all bagged up and labeled, and I'm gonna show you what I have. So this is our meat that we got from the two chickens. We got two meals of breasts. So it's two breasts for us for one meal. It's 10 pieces of chicken breast. We got a small bag of wings of eight. We got some chicken pieces started to go with another small one that I have that'll give us another meal for tacos. And then we have our thighs and our chicken legs in here eight of those uh, will be enough to feed us so that's the two chickens processed okay guys so that was um, our chicken parting out um, hope you guys enjoyed it hope that it is informative for you to show you that you don't have to just shrink wrap a whole chicken because that doesn't always work for everybody so um, that's it we appreciate you guys. We thank you for coming along and watching. If you're enjoying our videos, please hit the like. That really does help us. Helps us to know um, what to do. Helps us to get our videos out there. Um, and if you really like us, give us a subscribe. We thank you guys from Grain Free Homestead. Hope you have a great, great week. We'll see you on the next one.